The Johnny Cash Show began a new season's tour at the Wallace Civic Center in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. This was the first among many stops across the United States and Canada. Backstage, before the concert, I interviewed the man in black and a longtime member of his group. Preceding our interview with Johnny Cash tonight at the Wallace Civic Center, we're going to be talking with Marshall Grant, who has been with Johnny for how many years, Marshall? All my life. All your life. <laughs> been coming up on 25 years before too long, 24 years, almost 25. And you were at one time half of the Tennessee Two, the which... The original Tennessee Two, I was half of it, yeah. The other half is Luther Perkins, who passed away 10 years ago in a fire in his home, right. And then after that, the Tennessee Two eventually became three? And well, before that, though, we actually became three. Uh, Luther, <coughs> at the uh, time of Luther's death, we were, <coughs> excuse me, we were the Tennessee Three, which included W.S. Holland on drums, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now you're still billed as the Tennessee Three, but there's, what, <laughs> five of you? Uh, there's seven of us, I think, now. And uh, the stage gets full of musicians sometimes, but it's still the Tennessee Three. It'll always be, you know. We, uh, I love the name Tennessee Three, you know, the people that... Of course, the people that surround and help us out are great people, but we still go with the name Tennessee Three. Now, you, as a fellow performer and a personal friend, have stuck with Johnny Cash through a lot of hard times, and I'm sure you're enjoying the, the changes and the, the different pace that you have nowadays. Oh, uh, of course, yeah. There's no need to say I'm not, because it's, uh, it's true, you know. Of course, there were some hard times, but it was worth it all, you know, to stick with it. And, uh, of course, I stuck with him because he was the man that I knew he was, but... Uh, it's, it's awful good now, and has been for some time, and, and uh, I'm thankful. I notice you're wearing a cross. Uh, yes. During these years, did you also become a committed Christian? Well, I've always been a Christian. I was raised in a Christian home, and uh, my parents were very, very uh, religious, and my whole family was. And so uh, this has nothing to do with the relationship with John. This is something that's on my own. And, uh, of course, John is a very dedicated Christian, and uh, I love to think that I am, too. And you mentioned Luther Perkins, and I know both you and John thought very highly of him oh, as yes. a friend and yes. a performer. Yes. And in reviewing some of my old Johnny Cash albums, I came across the uh, song when Luther played the boogie woogie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did John write that before or after Luther passed away? Oh, no, no. Away? John wrote it long before Luther uh, passed away, and uh, Luther played the guitar on that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a nice yeah. tribute to him that I'm, I'm yes. sure he enjoyed. Yes, absolutely. It's a... Uh, to me, it's a classic, Luther played the boogie, yeah. It definitely is. Yes. Being an entertainer and a performer, how do you feel about wearing the black to go along with well, Johnny? Well, you theme? know. <laughs> you can't have any glitters? And <laughs> well, we can, you know. Uh, we, we discuss this at great length, and we've, we've worn it all colors, the Tennessee Three has and the rest of the band, but uh, we don't feel right. It seems like nothing blends on the stage, nothing really... Uh, does the job like black or dark colors. We've worn black, uh, dark blue, that works pretty well, but uh, when you, we, we go all the way around the circle and we wind up right back in black, it just seems to fit the show better. And it certainly fits, uh, fits John's image better, so we just sort of hang with it. After 25 years of doing this, isn't the concert tour routine a little tiresome? No, not really. Uh, you know, when you're doing something you love, uh, you really look forward to it. Of course, I'm a family man. I have a family at home, and uh, I love home, and I, I really hate to leave home. I, I hate to leave my wife and, and everything that I have, but, uh, but it becomes part of you. And we're fortunate enough to be in the business to, uh, in a position to where we don't have to work all the time. You know, we work about 75 to 80 uh, days per year. Uh, that's concert work, and then, uh, of course, the television recordings on top of that, but it makes for a good life. I feel that I'm home, and in my home, more hours per year than if I were working eight to five. Right, so, than an average. Yeah, on an average, so I feel good about it. Is this concert in Fitchburg the start of a new tour? Yeah, it starts in Fitchburg and goes up the East Coast into Canada, up in the Maritimes. Mm -hmm. When you're on a, a first night of a tour, is there a little more nervousness? No. Uh, we never get nervous. <laughs> never? <laughs> because you've all worked together so well, long? Well, and... you know, John's not even here yet. He will be momentarily, but uh, I haven't seen him today. And uh, sometimes I never see him until he actually comes out on stage. I mean, most of the time I do, but uh, I go uh, sometimes on the stage on the first day of a tour, and I don't really see John until he comes in front of the microphone. But we, all, we know what we're going to do. He know, 
We don't do the same show every night. Don't misunderstand me. We do something. It's different every night, but we always know what he's going to do. After this long a time together, you you just anticipate everything that he's going to do, and he he has no routine. So he just kind of plays it by ear as yeah. he goes. Who calls mm -hmm. the shots? We'll play right. this song and everybody picks up on That's it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't even say it. We just know what it's going to do. Oh, yeah. just by an action or the words it's he's just leading into it? Maybe it's a word that he says. Maybe it's something that uh, it, maybe it's a look that he has or something. We just know it's just something. Uh, not only me, but all the guys on stage know. Mm -hmm. Now, some other people that used to be with the group that I don't believe travel with you anymore, the Statler brothers mm -hmm. and there Carl was Perkins. A long time. Yes. Now they've well, the Statlers have had a big career branching off from this well, group. You know, uh, John did wonders for the Statler brothers and Carl Perkins, in my opinion, and uh, we got them started in the business, and they've just been tremendously successful, and we're very, very happy about that. The Statler brothers did not outgrow the Johnny Cash show. I, we felt that it was better that the Statler brothers venture out on their own. They could go much farther than being. Uh, just a part of this show, or if they stayed with it all their life, it'd be tagged as part of the Johnny Cash show. It should have been the Statler Brothers, and they've done it, and they've done it well. Has Marshall Grant fulfilled all of his lifetime dreams? Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a sharecropper son from a family of 14, and uh, I never ever had a dream of that I would ever reach that status. So yes, I've, uh, I've fulfilled all of my dreams. If I were to leave tonight, yeah, I really have. Well, I really appreciate you sharing your time with us before the concert, and I'm glad you're not the least bit nervous about <laughs> doing the concert or anything uh, else. <laughs> it's been my pleasure. We're ready to go. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The moment finally arrived when Johnny emerged from his bus to talk to some friends and well-wishers. He later sat down with us to discuss his background, including his difficulties with pill addiction and alcohol. Well, the time has arrived. Johnny Cash has arrived. Fans are standing around. Everyone's very excited. And I'm probably the most excited of all. Mr. Cash, I am so happy to meet you. Thank you, Barbara. I'm excited, too. I'm glad to be here. Is, this is the first concert on a new tour? Mm -hmm. So is there a little more apprehension on the first night? Well, you know, everybody's glad to get back on the road. We, it's what our whole group loves most of all is to do the concerts. And, what? We couldn't wait to get to Pittsburgh. That amazes me because I would think that mm -hmm. after achieving the amount of success that you have achieved, that this concert tour would be a bit of a grind and you wouldn't be anxious to get back on the road. Now what you're saying is as old as you are, you should want to stay home, right? No, that's not what I said at all, John. <laughs> no, I've been on the road 24 years and I'm programmed for it. I love to travel and I love to do concerts. Would that be the phase of the business that you enjoy most? I think so. And when you pulled up, I was intrigued by your mode of travel. I know you have a fascination with trains, and that bus looks a lot like a railroad car to me. Somebody told me that. Yeah, it does. But is, you're telling me that's, ac <coughs> that's accidental? Well, it really is, yeah. It is? It's the only one they've ever uh, made that they painted black like that. Uh -huh. uh, it was made by a company in, in Georgia that makes school buses. And they make motor homes as well, but they never had made a black one, uh, or made one that they painted black, and they didn't want to. So we convinced them that uh, they should. For the man in black, there could be nothing else. Well, Is wearing black as symbolic for you now as it was in 1971 when you wrote that song? I think so. Mm -hmm. It is. I wouldn't feel comfortable on stage and anything else. Really? Really. Yeah. And it's also the title of your book. And mm -hmm. as I had read this book years ago and was re reading it before meeting you, I kept thinking what a fascinating, fantastic movie script it would make. Has there been any consideration for making a movie out of it? The Billy Graham organization have, have asked me if they could make a movie from the book. And I've rejected it so far because I hope the story is not near over yet. Oh, that's why you want to wait. Well, you can't quite wait until it's all over. <laughs> but you and June have both acted and are both accomplished actors that you could well, very well you. play yourselves in the book. Do you remember these days and some of these old Sun Record albums I have here? And uh, you look sure a do. bit different today, but uh, 
Still looking good, Johnny. Thank you. When you started with Sun, I believe that was back in 55, mm -hmm. there were some other prominent people who were beginning at that time, namely Elvis and Jerry Lee Lewis and right. Roy Orbison. Right. There were a bunch of us that were calling rockabillies. You know, Elvis, of course, was the king of all of us rockabillies. He opened the door for the rest of us at Sun Records. It was Carl and Jerry and Lee and the Tennessee Two and myself. Yeah. Here's Is that my new something one. new we're plugging? Okay, new, good. It's from a silver anniversary album. It's a new single called Ghost Riders in the Sky. Okay, and is that out now? Just released. It just released, so we'll hope that everyone will go out and pick up a, a copy of that. In talking about those early days and the, the three other names that I mentioned, you mm -hmm. seem to have had the brightest destiny of those particular four men, the others having met some untimely, tragic situations in their life. How do you feel about this? Well, I don't know. I've had a uh, few hard times myself, you know. We were back a little aware of that. But. 60s and early, well, back in the 60s, late 50s. But um, uh, I think it's only by the grace of God that I'm here and alive and feeling well today, you know. I, like I say in the book, I have to give him credit for it. That he seemed to think there was something in me worth preserving, and he gave me the strength to overcome the destructive forces that I had uh, taken upon myself. And we thank the Lord for doing that. Thank you. Do you feel that the inclusion and your commitment to the spiritual music has caused you to lose any fans along the way? Probably. But mm. it doesn't particularly bother you? No. Because uh, we're going to do some here tonight, and it's a, really the part of the show we enjoy most. Uh, we change it from time to time, get new songs, and we've got some new gospel songs that uh, we've been looking for the kind that, that you know, most anybody could enjoy or accept, that, uh, that don't offend anybody in any way whatsoever. Just, just happy songs, you know. Mm -hmm. we were watching the country awards program and we were hoping to see a glimpse of you but we did hear about you when Joe Cates the producer got his special award he said a special thank you to Johnny Cash that it would not have been possible for him without you that was very nice how did that make you feel <laughs> I heard about it I didn't see it but it made me feel very good thank you. and on this I was curious also on this tour if your family is traveling with you my wife, June Carter. And your, is your son traveling no, with you? No, he's in school now. Do we hope that he'll follow along in the fam both family footsteps? He already, he already has. He's, uh, when he's able to travel with us in concert, he, he does two or three songs on the show. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that yeah. you and June traveling and performing together is a key to the success of your marriage? Well, I think it's part of it. Because we've got an element that we can share in our marriage that most people most marriages don't have, and that's the music, you know? And Performing it together, sharing it, and uh, writing songs together, singing them together. Yeah, I think sometimes people aren't aware how many songs June helps write or oh, writes on her song, own. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you also have your mutual faith in God. Right, right. Probably it's never been more true of any other couple that behind every good man there's a good woman than with you and June. Do you feel that uh, that's a fairly true statement? I think that's a very true statement, right. And uh, that she perhaps was the person that helped you through most of the difficult times? She was always there. Well, Mr. Cash, I don't want to keep you too long because I know you have to change into your other black shirt <laughs> to get on stage. But we are thrilled to have you here to interview, and we appreciate you taking the time and extending this courtesy to us. Wish you continued success and a great show tonight. Thank you. Nice to be in Pittsburgh. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, along with hearing about Johnny Cash and uh, the Tennessee Three, now we have an opportunity to hear a little bit about the car.